our firm has helped to build many of the organizations that support the impact investing industry today. We've grown to five mutual funds and have $2 billion in assets under management. We have an exclusive focus on impact investing dating back to 1991. Secondly, our impact investment standards are published and have been since 2005. Their purpose is for transparency in the investment process and to give our investors a deep understanding of what we mean when we say we're applying environmental and social standards. At Domini, we believe a sound financial system is built on a foundation of fairness and justice for all. The title of our annual impact report this year was Strength in Numbers. The thousands of investors that come together in our fund with a mutual care is how we work on their behalf to build a better future. So how do we conduct our research? So the first thing that we do, we ask ourselves uh, the first question, which is how is this company generating its revenues? What is the core business model of the company that, that we're researching? Um, so some companies are fundamentally aligned with our standards. So those are companies that have a very positive impact on society. So think about a renewable energy company or a mass transit company. We're neutral. Uh, towards other industries that uh, are partially aligned with our standards, for example, a real estate company. And then there are companies that are partially misaligned with our standards. So we go in we get with a negative bias. And an example would be an auto manufacturer where we understand that autos are necessary, people need them, but there's obviously a very negative environmental impact. And then we have the industries that are fundamentally misaligned with our standards uh, that you can see on the slide. And those are the ones that have a negative impact on society. So after understanding the core business, as I said, we have two questions that we answer. So the first one is the core business. The second question is, how is this company reading its partners in business, such as employees, investors, customers, the ecosystems, and the communities in which it's operating at the local, national, and global level. Once we have answered those two questions, so the core business model and the treatment of its partners, um, we combine those two uh, to look um, at the overall positives and negatives and decide if the company meets our standards. We believe that our research helps us to select companies that on balance have more positives than negatives, uh, and they are addressing their, their key sustainability challenges. The annual impact report is our attempt to try to show what engagement looks like. What does it mean to engage? How do we use our voice? And what difference does it make? How do we think about progress when we're working on some of the world's most intractable problems, addressing climate change or human rights? And how do we see indicators of progress that give us hope to keep going? So in the last year, we had 382 engagements looking at 190 unique companies based both in the United States and around the world. We had different themes that we tried to advance through our engagements and you see some of that represented here. We recognize racial justice as a cross-cutting theme that issues of environmental health or worker health and safety may have disproportionate impacts on communities of color. So we've integrated a racial justice lens intentionally across any engagements where we see that opportunity. And this is reflected as 198 engagements over the year. Climate change is a key priority for us. We're really engaging around how companies are addressing their business model transition to limit emissions and align with the 1.5 degree scenario. We also have prioritized the issue of forests for many years, recognizing that forests are a systemic risk and opportunity in our ecosystems. So we're looking at eliminating deforestation that's connected to commodities like palm oil and soy that are in many of the food and beverage companies' daily business operations, as well as making the transition to more sustainable and regenerative agriculture. Starting with climate change, what we're looking to advance is a company business model that aligns with the low carbon transition. There are companies that are advancing solutions like renewable energy companies 
There are companies whose business model is heavily polluting and they really need to change. So our standards kind of help us eliminate some of those worst acting companies, but also help us find ways where we can advance change and progress. Some companies like chemicals rely on fossil fuel inputs to make the fragrances that go in our food or other chemicals that we need for our industry to operate. And what we're engaging around is eliminating the fossil fuel inputs and moving to more renewable regenerative sources. The climate crisis will require companies to make these meaningful transitions, but we don't want them to leave communities and workers and other stakeholders behind, which is why we are engaging around the just transition. So we've been engaging with companies in the transportation industry to ask them for a just transition report. This is asking, who are you meeting with? How are you taking their feedback into account? How are you ensuring that the jobs of the clean energy transition have good wages and safety protections? So these just transition engagements are helping lift up that priority to companies and encourage better disclosure. So in the context of our annual impact report, you can dig into some of these examples, read about our engagements connected to healthcare, access, and financial services, and um, see a little bit more about how we're leveraging our role in active ownership to align with our impact investment standards.